Edinburgh on a day when history was made. It was a magnificently colourful and impressive sight as the Sovereign's escort accompanied Her Majesty through the streets of the city full of welcoming crowds. This was to be the first time since the union of the Scottish and English crowns in 1603 that a reigning sovereign would attend a general assembly of the Church of Scotland. First, Her Majesty, the Duke of Edinburgh and Princess Anne attended divine service in the High Kirk of Edinburgh. From St. Giles Cathedral, the royal procession made its way towards the assembly hall in the new Scottish state coach. In time long past, a visit from the monarch to the assembly would not have been greeted with such enthusiasm. In fact, it would have been regarded as an interference in the freedom of the church and its affairs. For although the queen is head of the Church of England, she does not hold the same position with the Church of Scotland. However, the course of history has happily changed the relationship between church and state. Today, Her Majesty was a most welcome visitor. This was certainly an occasion of splendor in a wonderful setting. The Queen, the Duke and the Princess entered the precincts of the impressive Assembly Hall to join the 1,360 members, half ministers, half elders, inside. On their way, passing the statue of John Knox, the 16th century reformer and historian. And so Her Majesty entered the assembly for the first time. It was, she said, an occasion which she had resolved to attend at the first suitable opportunity. That opportunity had arrived happily and with immense warmth on the part of those who welcomed her. With her husband by her side and her daughter listening attentively, the Queen gave the assembly this message of hope. Christians everywhere are sustained and inspired by the ideal of the brotherhood of man and the commandment to love one another. In this imperfect world, the struggle to achieve this ideal is long and hard. But we all look to the leadership of the church and we are most conscious of its unceasing efforts. There may be an inclination to look back at the apparent lack of progress, but it is far better to look forward with hope, with faith, and with expectation. That expressed the common hope of all on this historic day.